Spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic that is used to remove excess fluid in conditions like hypertension and edema. In this video, I will teach you an easy mnemonic to remember spironolactone, its mechanisms, clinical uses, and side effects. Ready? Let's go! This girl is the type of student who likes to be prepared. Maybe you can relate. Today, she's arrived at science class early and with a tall stack of spiral notebooks. These spiral notebooks are our symbol for the drug spironolactone. Because spiral and spironolactone sound pretty similar, don't they? Spironolactone is a common drug that might pop up on your NCLEX, so let's anchor yourself to this spiral notebook to enter this scene on spironolactone. Now, let's talk about how spironolactone works. Not only did she bring extra notebooks, but this student also brought extra water bottles. You can never be too prepared, right? You can use these extra water bottles to help you remember that spironolactone is a diuretic, meaning it treats conditions of volume overload by removing excess fluid. Extra water bottles for too much fluid. Got that? Spironolactone works by mimicking the effects of the hormone aldosterone on the kidneys. This stimulates the sodium potassium pump in the distal tubule and collecting duct in the kidneys which, in turn, causes a loss of sodium and water in the urine. This loss of water is particularly useful in treating edema, since edema is just a buildup of excess fluid. Next, let's cover one key aspect of spironolactone that makes it a bit different than the other diuretic drugs. Notice how this student also brought extra amounts of the classic school snack, bananas. Here at Pixarize, we use bananas to symbolize potassium because bananas have a lot of potassium in them, right? And since this girl has brought extra bananas, this is our symbol for increased potassium. You see, spironolactone increases potassium levels in the body as a potassium sparing diuretic. This means that spironolactone works to prevent the loss of potassium in the urine. And in high doses, this buildup of potassium can even lead to overly high levels of potassium, known as hyperkalemia. The reason why this is important is because most other drugs are potassium wasting, meaning that they reduce potassium levels. So spironolactone's ability to increase potassium is a very unique distinction that sets it apart from the rest. Note that you want to be extra careful using spironolactone with other drugs that also increase potassium levels. I'm talking about drugs like ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Be sure to monitor potassium levels in patients taking these drugs to avoid life-threatening hyperkalemia. Since she got there so early, the student decided to refill one of her water bottles with the sink at the science desk. If you've ever used one of these science classroom sinks before, you'd know that they are always a little tricky to manage, since a little turn causes the sink to spray out with super high pressure. Well, this sink spraying at high pressure happens to be our symbol for high blood pressure or hypertension, since spironolactone is a drug that is used to treat high blood pressure. This should make sense, since the drug works by removing extra fluid, right? Reducing blood volume can help to reduce blood pressure for obvious reasons. You can also think of it this way. Turning on the faucet is lowering or releasing the pressure on the pipes, just like spironolactone lowers the pressure in the blood vessels. It's worth noting that spironolactone is actually a relatively weak diuretic compared to the other diuretic drugs, so it's often used in combination with a loop or thiazide diuretic. This combination works out pretty well since spironolactone can offset the loss of potassium that most other drugs cause, allowing rapid decreases in fluid volume and blood pressure, while keeping potassium levels stable. The spraying water is also spraying all over the girl's lap. 
Hopefully, she's early enough that she has time for a quick outfit change. We don't want her classmates to think she's Peter Pants. Which reminds me, spironolactone causes increased urination. This might seem obvious after talking about how spironolactone gets rid of extra fluid, but there are some important nursing considerations to cover related to increased urination. First, you will want to closely monitor both the patient's urine output and kidney function. Spironolactone won't be effective if the patient is in renal failure, so keep an eye on the BUN and creatinine levels. You can teach your patient going home on spironolactone to take the drug in the morning to prevent nocturia or excessive urination at night. And last but not least, when it comes to fluid retention or fluid loss, the best indicator of treatment success is recording daily weights. Sudden weight gain is usually due to fluid retention and should be reported to the provider. That's everything for spironolactone, so let's summarize. Spironolactone is a diuretic that is used to remove excess fluid. By reducing blood volume, it can be very effective in treating edema and hypertension. Importantly, spironolactone is a potassium-sparing diuretic, meaning that it increases potassium levels in the body and may even cause hyperkalemia at high doses. So you'll want to keep a close eye on electrolyte levels. Since spironolactone causes fluid loss by way of urination, you'll want to monitor the patient's urine output, kidney function, and daily weights. Thanks for watching my mnemonic video. If you'll excuse me, I think science class is about to start, but I'll catch you in the next video here at Pixarize. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.